So what I'm, what I'm going to do in, in, uh, in this presentation is to give you a very simple explanation of autofocusing. Many of you probably have heard about autofocusing and Marchenko imaging. And my, my guess is that for many of you, there's a certain magic to it. And you know, and, and, and although magic is great, there's no magic in our field. Everything is just boils down to waves interacting with each other. So what I'm going to do in these 20 minutes is explain to you um, how this works with a very simple model. You see the model over here, it's a Dutch flag. I made the Dutch flag in honor of uh, the nationality of myself and my co-authors, who are from the Netherlands. Uh, you, can, you can apply the same thing for VSP, where the wave may bounce back and forth in the horizontal direction, then you change everything by a French flag, and it will still work. So, so let's talk about, about autofocusing. So let's, let's take a little bit, step back in, in history. If, if I want to know the Green's function from any point in the interior of the medium to my surface, there's one simple way to do it, and that's just to stick a source in the subsurface. Because the Green's function is just the impulse response. And I stick an impulsive source in the subsurface, I measure the response of my surface, I have my Green's function, I'm done. It's just not very practical. But in principle, that would be a great way to get your Green's functions. And I'll tell you in a minute why you want to do that, by the way. Now, interferometry has allowed us to replace that source by a receiver. So that's the virtual source method, and then and the whole what we've learned in the last 10 years is that to a certain extent you can explain, you can replace our sources by receivers and play the same game. And so this is what seismic interferometry does, this is what the virtual source method does, this is basically what, um, what Nick Elfert and El Andre Bakulin uh, pioneered. But what if we didn't need a receiver either? What if we didn't need anything? What if we had a recipe? to data from the surface to compute the Green's function from any point in the interior to the surface. That's really what we're talking about. That is what autofocusing is all about. And we call it focusing because if you can focus your wave field, that's the same as knowing the Green's function because of, because of reciprocity. If those waves propagate back, it's the pulse response. So let's first talk about why you want to do this. If you know your Green's functions, you know your imaging operators. You know everything you need to take your wave field from the surface, propagate it downward into the subsurface, and you can do your imaging. You don't need to build a model anymore. You don't need to model wave propagation anymore. This is all you need. The image falls just by convolutions of your reflected waves with these mean structures. So if you can do this, you're done. Now, you know, it, it, it's, it's of course not, not quite as simple, but this is the whole idea. This is where we want to go. So this is actually why we do this work. You know, I mean, this, if, if, if this works, it'll replace modeling wave propagation. You can do without it. It'll replace model building. It'll allow you to, to downward continue through a very complicated overburden to your target. So that, that, that's the goal. So there's a whole bunch of theory out there, and then we've shown you some of the theory over the last two years, and there are some papers in the, in the current project review book but rather than showing you more theory, I'm just going to show you how it works for a very simple model. This is the Dutch flag model. It's a model with two interfaces because that's the smallest number of interfaces that you need to get multiple, to get internal multiple. So that's why I picked this model. So let's define some things. We have waves that bounce back and forth. There's a reflection coefficient R0 for the top layer. And of course, minus R0 for the, the upward reflected waves. And in all these diagrams that I show you, you can see the vertical axis, you may read it as depth, and you may read the horizontal axis as time if you want to. It, gives you, it shows you how the waves propagate over time. There's a reflection coefficient for the bottom layer. There's transmission coefficients for the two layers. And there's a travel time, two tau it takes to bounce back and forth in the layers. That's all the variables we need for this problem. So let's first look at the reflected waves. So if I send in a unit wave from above, it reflects off the top layer, it propagates to the bottom layer, and it reflects upward. And then it bounces in the, in the middle layer, it does it a couple of times, I get all the multiples, I get a whole series of multiple reflected waves, I can sum them if I want to, the, you know the math isn't that important. In the, in the bottom equation, I give you the reflection coefficient, and I'd like you to pay attention to the denominator, one plus R0, R1, the 2i omega t. That's the term that accounts for the reverberations in the middle layer. And that term will come back throughout my talk. So that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the one thing I want you to remember from, this, from, this, from the equations on this slide. So now let's talk about the famous focusing solutions that you may have heard about. 
So focusing solutions are solutions of my system that um, satisfy a specific boundary condition. And, it, and this boundary condition is the following. You, you, you define a focusing level, which can be any level in the, in the medium. And you may think of it like your redatement level, to which you want, might want to redate in your waves. You don't have to, but that, that could be one application. So it's an arbitrary level in your medium. And you replace the medium below the focusing level by a homogeneous medium, for, for reasons that will become clear to you later. And then the focusing solution is a solution of this system that has only one downgoing wave below the focusing level. Nothing else. So let's see how, how, how it would work, how we can create such a focusing solution. It's not very difficult for this problem. So first of all, I send in a wave from above, and of course it propagates to my focusing level and then continues to propagate downward. But of course, this downward propagating wave is reflected upward at the reflectors. And then it bounces back downwards again, as you can see here. And now I can see this is not the focusing solution, because the focusing solution was defined as the solution as one downgoing wave of unit strength below my focusing level. And this one is two. So this solution has two waves that we need to get rid of. We need to kill these. How do we do that? It's not very complicated. We send in an other wave from above, a next wave from above, indicated by the red arrow, such that it annihilates those downgoing waves that we don't want. So remember, the focusing solution is a solution that's only one downgoing wave below my focusing level. And so to get that, I cannot send in one wave from above. I need to send in some other wave from above. Now we need to figure out what a downgoing wave is. So I put, you know, u, which might be that's a mathematical symbol to indicate a downgoing wave. I still need to figure out what it is. It's not very complicated. If I have a wave of unit amplitude propagating below the focusing level, then the wave in the middle layer has must have strength one over the transmission coefficient. Now I know the reflected wave that propagates upward from my focusing level. And now I can write down an equation for that unknown downgoing function u, and, and the details are not important. I just put it in here so you can take the slides home and take a look at it if you choose to do so. So you get it, you can basically figure out quite easily what is the downgoing wave that I'm ascending from the surface so that there is no more downgoing wave or that there's only one downgoing wave below my focusing level. That's the problem that I'm solving. And now I can I can know all the variables. And don't worry about the symbols. So so this is my focusing solution. It's a focus. In this case, it's a, there's two downgoing waves coming in from the top, and they are designed in such a way that I have only one down, downgoing wave below my focusing level. So here's the focusing solution. I wrote it here on the on, on the top. The details are not important. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight two aspects of it. I'm sorry. I want you to remember in this case we have the focusing solution at the surface has two downgoing waves and two upgoing waves. That's different than the Green's function, because we've seen already that for the Green's function, for this two-layer model, we had infinitely many upgoing waves because we had all the reverberations in my model. Those have gone. So here are the focusing solutions. And you know, for you this is now just math, but I just want to highlight two aspects of it. Actually, the focusing solutions, I've, I've decomposed them into a downgoing component and an upgoing component. This is the downgoing component. So this is what I should send down into the medium in such a way that below my two layers, I only have one downgoing wave. So this is the downgoing wave at the surface. And you know, I, I, this is just the math for you, but the, the, the takeaway point here is this term here, one plus R zero, R one, e to the two I omega T. And for those of you who still know about the Bacchus filter, this is your D reverberation filter. This is the filter that kills all the internal multiples. So from this recipe, that we want to get a focusing solution, the solution that is only one downgoing wave below my focusing level, it immediately gives me my reverberation filter. I have created an ingoing wave in such a way that all the multiples that bounce back and forth in that layer are gone. And if I look at the upgoing component of the focusing solution at the surface, I only have primaries. I get one reflected wave proportional to R0, that's the reflected wave from the first surface. I get one reflected wave from the bottom layer that has strength R1. I only get my primaries. Now, that doesn't hold for models with more layers. It's a peculiarity of the two-layer models. But it's very nice. You can see that for this model, that there's lots of internal multiples. 
you can do a very simple day. Uh, there's very special solution that will give you primaries only. And this is that solution. So let's see how that works with more layers. So this is a numerical simulation for a model that has um, three layers. So there is three interfaces, I'm sorry, they indicated by the black lines and by the, there's also an interface at the, at the green line. And the green line is also the focusing level. And this is the what happens if we set the unit down going wave in from above. So from the top left, you see a unit down going wave going down. That wave reflects of all the interfaces. I get internal reflections. And so I can see that this is not my focusing solution because at the focusing level, I don't have one go down going wave. I have more down going waves. So I need to get rid of those down going waves. This is how we do it. Let's focus on the down going wave uh, that you see in the black ellipse. Just like for the, for the model with two interfaces, how do we kill this down going wave? Well, we send in another wave coming in from the surface, which annihilates the wave that is radiated downward from the upper interface. And then we can go to the other downgoing wave that you see at the bottom of this black ellipse. How do we annihilate it? Again, we send in another wave coming in from above so that there is no more downgoing wave hitting the lowest interface. Now we have only one downgoing wave left that hits the interface. Uh, I'm sorry, we have two. We have our, our main pulse propagating downwards and one, uh, one multiple propagating downwards. We need to get rid of this multiple too. How do we do it? It's the same story, it gets boring. We just send in another downgoing wave from the surface so that it annihilates the downgoing wave that we don't want. And this is our focusing solution. We have only one downgoing wave at the focusing level. So again, you can play, the, you can play this game for a model with any type of layer. And there's a recipe actually for designing that that, that, that wave that I should send down, so that at the focusing level I get only one downgoing wave. Now, let's think about this. If at the focusing level I get only one downgoing wave, if I know that wave field, then I know how the system will respond if I would place a source at the focusing level that sends down a downgoing wave only. Here I've created the wave field that gives me only a unit downgoing wave at my focusing level. If I send that wave field into the medium, that gives me the response of the medium to a unit source at my focusing level. And now we start to make a connection with having that virtual source there without having a receiver there, creating a virtual source at the focusing level. And you can also see that we are going to create not just the Green's function, this is a recipe that gives us the downward radiating component of the Green's function. And in fact, you can show that you can get both the downward and the upward component of the Green's function. So let's see how this works. Here's the focusing solution that I just showed you. I showed it now at, at a different scale because now I put the, the medium under the focusing level under it. What happens if I let this wave propagate into the medium? Here you have it. The wave that is radiated downward from my focusing level starts to interact with all the reflectors again um, and ultimately makes it back up to the surface. This is ultimately the downward component of the green function. This is the response of my system. If I had a unit source at my focusing level that was sending a unit wave downward. So that's really what we are doing with the focusing solutions. We are finding wave states that behave as if there is at the focusing level a unit source radiating downward. Okay, now I'm, 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 I'm gonna go, actually I'm gonna skip some slides, but there's a recipe for for showing you how to get that uh, um, that solution. And you know there is a relation between these focusing solutions, F1, and the Green's function. And this is a very symbolic derivation I'm even going to show you. But there is this relation. And crucial in this relation is R of omega, which is the reflected waves that you have re recorded at the surface. So those are data. That's something that you know. I'm going to skip a few slides because we started late. And I'm going to show you ultimately that we can reduce everything to an integral equation for the downgoing wave. And the integral equation is shown over here. And there's just there's many terms here. Ignore, ignore clutter. What do you need to know this integral equation? This function m in essence is, is a measure of my focusing solution, is what I want to know. What do I need to know in this equation? The reflected waves recorded at the surface. Those I have, that's why we do seismic experiments. 
And I need to know the direct wave. I need to direct wave that propagates from my surface to my focus level, which is here called D of T. So there's many terms here that are known, which is the direct wave D of T, and there's the reflected waves, and then there's an integral equation for a wave field that I don't know. And once I know that wave field, I know my focusing solution. So this tells us also what we need to create that focusing solution. We need to know the direct wave, and for this we need the macro model, and we need the reflected waves recorded at the surface. Those are exactly the same things that we need for basically any type of imaging that we routinely do. So to create these focusing solutions, you don't have to do anything extra other than solving this integral equation. And ultimately, that gives you the Green's function. So let me just highlight now. OK, so this, this summarizes what you need to know. You need to know a smooth reference model for your direct wave. And you need to know your reflected waves recorded at the surface. I want to show you yet, for the same model, the same Dutch flag model, you might say, well, hey, where's the, where's the black? Um, I want to show you another focusing solution at some level, at an intermediate level in my, in my media. Because you can play this game wherever you want. And so another focusing solution is, is defined as a solution of the system that is, that is made homogeneous below my focusing level, and that only has one unit downgoing wave below my focusing level. This is already the focusing solution. You see it here. Because I have only one unit wave going down uh, below my focusing level, and there are no internal multiples right now. But it's illustrative to see how you can use these focusing solutions. So this is in a truncated medium. That means the medium that I've made homogeneous below my focusing level. Now let's say, if I take this wave, and I send this wave into the real medium, this is what I get, right? And that is just the downgoing Green's function that radiates the Green's function, the response to the system to a unit source that radiates only downward below my focusing level. So this repeats what I just showed you earlier, that once you know the focusing solution and that wave, you let that wave propagate into the medium, you get your full downward component of the Green's function. And I want to show you, you can also get the upward component of the Green's function. So here you have the Green's function, let's forget about the details. Let's now take that focusing solution that I just showed you and I time reverse it. So then I had one downward propagating wave originally for my focusing solution. In the time reverse solution, that means I get one upper propagating wave that, that hits my interface. So, I'm sorry. So what if I take away now this downgoing wave, and there's mathematics that corresponds to it, and I let this wave propagate into the real medium? Well, what I, what I get, I get the response of the medium of an upper propagating wave that from the focusing level propagates in my medium and then starts bouncing back and forth. That is just the upgoing mean function. So this, this, sim sim this is a simple example that shows you that once you know your focusing solutions, you can not only get the downward propagating Green's function, you can also get the upward propagating Green's function. So not only have you retrieved the Green's function, you've also decomposed the Green's function in upward and downward propagating waves. And that is really powerful because that is what you need to do imaging. If you know at any point in your subsurface the wave field decomposed in the upwards and downward propagating waves, that's what you need to do imaging. So here I, I show this Green's function. Forget about the math now. Um, but here are these two Green's functions. And again, both of them have this reverberation term, 1 plus R0, R1, e to the 2 i omega t, that accounts for the multiples that, back, that bounce back and forth between the two layers. If I take the ratio of these two Green's functions, this reverberation term goes away, and I only get the reflected wave. I only get the reflected wave from the lower interface. And this is sort of a prototype of one of the two ways in which you could use outer focusing. You could take the reflected waves at the surface through this whole recipe, this whole machinery of the Marchenko equation and everything, and, and we've shown you the details for two years now. And, and, the, and the math is, is sort of daunting at first, but that's why I try to show you the, the, the principles here. You can take your wave field, record it at the surface, you can define the focusing level, let's say, below a complicated overburden, below salt, for example, and you take your wave field and you propagate it downward to the focusing level under your complicated overburden, 
You know the upgoing waves there. You know the downgoing waves there through a process called de de multidimensional deconvolution. You can get the reflectivity of the layers below your focusing level. So then you can do normal imaging from that focusing level downward. And you've gotten rid of all the complications of the overburden above. And in this equation, that's sort of, you know, there's no multidimensional deconvolution because it's one dimension. In this case, the ratio of the upgoing Green's function and the downgoing Green's function gives you the immediately the reflection coefficient of that lower layer. You basically are done. So this is one way in which you can use the focusing, these outer focusing techniques. You, you, you define one focusing level under your complicated overburden, and you downward propagate everything from the surface through the whole machinery of the Marchenko equation to the focusing level. No modeling involved, other than getting, having a model for a direct wave. It's just, you, it's just operations acting on your reflected waves, and you know the upwards and downward propagating waves at your focusing level. That is one way in which you, can, you could use this. Now, there's another way in which you could use this theory, and that's the following. What if I take my focusing level towards my lower interface? So now the travel time tau that I had, which was the travel time for the waves propagating along the black arrow, goes to zero, and I immediately get my reflection coefficient. The ratio of my upward and downward Green's function gives me immediately my local reflection coefficient. And you can show this holds true in general. So this is the second uh, way in which you could use outer focusing. You could, you could define a target area, you could use it in a target-oriented sense. You could have a target area below a complicated overburden. You apply the outer focusing algorithm to every to a discretized set of points in your target area. At every point in your target area, you have your downward propagating range function, you have your upper propagating range function, and the ratio of these two is your local reflection coefficient. And Filippo showed you last year, I mean, this works. I mean, this, at least on synthetics, we've got it to work. And data example is the real example, is the real, real challenge. So, you know, this is sort of the simplest model I could think of to explain the principles of outer focusing. What it really boils down to is that what you need for outer focusing is exactly the same as what you need for any normal seismic experiment. You need to have a smooth reference velocity, so you still need to do some form of velocity estimation. That that's going to stay. Um, and you're going to need your reflective waves, which you have, I presume. The focusing solutions gives you, at any desired point in the subsurface, the upward component of the, of the Green's function, the upward propagating component of the Green's function, and the downward propagating, downward propagating component of the Green's function. That Green's function accounts for all the downward continuation you need to do from the surface to your, to your focusing level. So you, you don't need to do any waveform modeling, you don't need any codes to, to you don't need to estimate the, the intermediate model between your acquisition level and your focusing level. You don't need to model the waves that propagate between your acquisition level and your focusing level. It's all taken care of, it's all done. And those upwards and downward propagating green functions you can use directly for the machine. And I've shown you two ways to do that. One is by using a redatement approach where you Focus, you find, you reduce everything to upward and downward propagating waves on the focusing level below your complicated overburden. That's method number one. Method number two is you do this for a set of <coughs> points in a target area and you get immediately the low range. Okay, thank you. I wish I could make it simpler. But if I take one interface, all the multiples go away and then, then, then it becomes really, really trivial. And I couldn't use a Dutch flag. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>